this is Debbie from Project 39 Mini Albums. This is the tutorial on how I made the Happy Halloween Folio. Um, I'm going to do a real quick walkthrough, but there's a more detailed walkthrough uh, listed in the description box or in my channel. I just wanted to show you to refresh your mind when you're making it. So it opens that way, and then it'll open like this. So um, this will open here. And that can go to the side. There's this. And here's that page. And then in the center, of course, is a waterfall. It goes like that. And then this side, you get those pages from there. And then here is that. Oops. That goes in like that that, that, and there's magnets holding that close. So let me show you how I made that. All right, before I get started with the tutorial, I want to show you I've made these two books with similar tutorials. I mean, obviously I have the shaker on this one. Um, this one has right here, this page has a little pocket. I didn't do the pocket on here because Frankly, there was enough going on in this book, and I don't think I need it anymore. Um, I've got some extra gussets where I didn't need, so I'm going to change this up yet again. So anyhow, these are basically the same, but as I make them, of course, I do it differently. So let us get started. So let me tell you the papers for the main page, and then I'll go through scoring them. So, um, and I've numbered them. Page number one, you need eight by 11. Number two, you need eight by five and five eighths. Three, eight by 11. And four, eight by 11. Five, eight by eight and a quarter. And then for the waterfall, the main piece is four by six and a half. And then I have five pieces, four by four and a half. So we can add pockets um, and photo mats afterwards, but those are the main pieces. So let's get started with scoring page number one. All right, page number one. We are going to take the 11 inch side and put it at the top. And by the way, I used uh, artisan cardstock, the eight and a half by 11. I'm finding that I love that as much as the 12 by 12, but for these smaller pieces, there's left, there's not as many leftover scraps. So anyhow, um, again, 11 inside at the top score at four and a half, five and a half, and 10. Number two is a smaller piece with the five and five eighths side at the top score at one that's it for that one number two i'm sorry number three eight by eleven we're going to score at half three quarters four and three quarters Do I want to score at five and an eighth? Well, it tells me to, so I'm going to five and an eighth and at um, nine and an eighth. If you want, you can cut this piece off. It's up to you. All right, number four, and you can wait till you start putting the pages in the book to see if you want it. Another eight, and eight by 11 size piece with the 11 inch side at the top. Score at half, three quarters, four, oh no, sorry, at half, four and a half, and eight and a half. We didn't need that three quarters. What am I going to do? Try to erase it. See? Just like new. Okay, score at a half. Four and a half, 
eight and a half. And then this piece, eight by eight and a quarter, with the eight and a quarter side of the top, make sure you don't mess it up. Um, score it a half and four and a half. And I might as well score these. So our four by four and a half inch pieces, I'm just going to score at four. It's easier than scoring at a half. So when we fold that flap down for the waterfall, the waterfall is going to be a four by four inch size. And we don't miter these corners. And actually, I'm not mitering too many of the other corners either. All right, so let's start. I'm going to keep this. Page number one and page number two. Um, I'm going to turn it over. So what we're going to be doing is putting this one inch piece onto this one inch piece. I'm going to turn it all over so I have the smaller piece, just so I have more room on the scoreboard to make sure it's straight. That's the only reason I did it. If you have a scoreboard that's longer, which I don't think anybody does. So I'll add glue. Oops, I don't want it on my scoreboard. And then I will put this piece right there so it is on to the right of that score line. And both centered at the top, or both pushed up to the top, so we get a good fold. There's lots of gook there. We're going to cover that with paper, so it's not a big deal. All right. Then page number two, I'm going to fold on my half inch tab. And let's fold on this one too. And I would fold them both front and back because as you go, you can decide if you want it to, which way you want the page to fold. Some you don't have any choice because of the size of the papers, but some you do. All right, this one. is this. So it's these two pieces. So they're going to go right on the edge on the far right hand side of that piece with the fold. Here's the flap. So the fold's going to go to the right hand side. Again, I'm using my scoreboard just so I can make sure that my pages stay straight. You know something else you could do if you wanted to. I put glue on the outside. All right, now I've switched it. And now the glue's on the inside. Again, this is going to be flat up against the front. I'll take my tab, put it underneath, and it will stop and then I can make sure I get a straight fold. So either way, but there we go. And I see I have a little overhang. So that's what happens when you don't miter the edges, but I don't mind. Look, took care of that. Okay, so now we have a bigger piece. Now, this one, number four, number three, oh, number four, I'm going to fold and burnish my tab. And fold on my other score lines as well. Okay. 
fold them both ways. And this is going to go Let me show you in the book where this is. This is this piece. So we're going to fold it. The first flap will, the fold will be on the left, open on the right, and the tab will be on the left. So it's like this. Here's the tab. We're folding it under. And that is going to go right down here. So that will cover the um, waterfall. So I will add blue. And it's going to go, we've got the first score line, the second score line is going to go right to the right of that second score line. And it's going to be pushed up to the top going to go a 32nd of an inch on this side of that score line because you don't want it you want to be able to open that up especially when the water falls there all right number three I can't remember why I put this gusset here but whoops my directions. I keep them in front of me so I don't forget. Fold and burnish on all the score lines just so it's easy to fold when you do it. There we go. All right, I'm adding glue. And this is going to go, so we've got these two score lines. This is where we've got the overlap. And this is going to the left of that one score line. And it's going to be pushed up to the top. And there we go. So, now let's make the waterfall. Grab the base of the waterfall which is the four by six and a half inch piece. Let's fold and burnish on all of these pieces. start at the top. I'm going to actually turn the scoreboard this way so it's easier to work. I'm going to put some glue on that first tab. Don't remember, don't forget you don't miter this. Push this up to the top, to the side, and there is perfect placement on a waterfall. Open that up. Take the next one. Go to the bottom of the last piece. I know it's hard to see, but again, we're using the side of the scoreboard to keep everything straight. Go to the bottom of the last piece, and that's where the fold line will be. So here. Now the next one, here's the bottom. That's where the next fold line will be, just like that. See, there's the fold. So we'll add glue there. Push it up on your scoreboard. One 
one more. Well, we'll do one more and then we'll do one more. If you get wonky waterfalls, this is the secret. Use your scoreboard. Or, or if you don't have a scoreboard, if you're using your paper cutter to score, just find a flat surface. You know, if your paper cutter has a straight line, you could use the edge of your paper cutter. Use something that you can push it up against. And so there we go. All right, now I will cut a one inch, maybe one inch, maybe longer. You could use whatever. Um, I would cut four inches and then I would score it at one inch. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So this is four inches by one inch. Let's just score at three. If you want, you could score at three and a quarter as well, just to add an extra, um, some extra room for movement. And then I'm going to turn this over. Not you again. Add glue to that bottom three quarter inch piece. Center that with the score line just to the right of the bottom so it's over it's not it's not covering our four and a half by or you know four and a half by six inch piece it's right over so then you can fold that over and there and then once you put the paper on here or once you're ready to put the paper add the magnets I would put the magnets on here first and then add the paper and make sure in retrospect, that should have been a little bigger. Maybe that's why I didn't have the 3 8 inch tab. Okay, what I'm going to do is take a four and a half by one inch piece. I'm going to score at three and a half and at three and a quarter. I'm going to fold and burnish on those score lines. And then I'm going to add some glue to that one by three and a one by three quarters inch, one by three quarters. And I'm gonna put it on my waterfall on the underneath where my first score line is just a smidgen, I'm centering it, smidgen over. So then when you get your paper, you can put magnets on here and then magnets on there. I would put the paper on first because once you add things to this, it gets chunky. And if you put the magnet on first, it may move a little. This I will add underneath these couple of pieces that will go here, but I'm not gonna put it there until I get pattern paper down. So that's important. Now, you can put pockets wherever you want. But to me, it depends on where I put my decorative paper. And the way to make a pocket is whatever length you want. So if you want a two inch pocket, you're gonna cut two and a half inches. And this piece of paper is four inches, so you'll cut half an inch on each side. So five inches by two and a half. Score on two short sides, one long side. And there you get a pocket. fold and burnish. This goes in like that and that can close like that. Fold and burnish and this can go like that. Add magnets here or add ribbon underneath the front cover and I would put it underneath the back cover as well and then that would be a beautiful ribbon closure. So there we go. There is a cute little um, folio and I use two fabulous collections. This is the Midnight Ride and Little Monsters. And that's what I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the like button if you appreciated getting this free tutorial. Don't forget to check out all of the products at Country Craft Creations, especially these paper lines that you can't get anywhere else. 
and I'd love if you became a subscriber of mine. It just shows that uh, you appreciate the time and effort that I take in making these tutorials for you. Thanks again. Have a fabulous day.